and welcome to the program. And uh, there you heard the sort of the high priestess of the New Age. We're going to talk about some of those issues this hour. And I have come across a new book very recently about a topic I have a great interest in because you know I track the paranormal and I've had my own paranormal experience and I know how dangerous that it is. So the book I have in front of me is titled The Second Coming of the New Age, The Hidden Dangers of Alternative Spirituality in Contemporary America and its churches. And the co-authors are Steve Bancars and Josh Peck. I have Steve with me today. On the line from Canada, the back cover of the book says, the new age has returned with full force in our culture, taking the West and its churches by storm. All across North America, Christian churches have unknowingly encouraged occult beliefs and practices far removed from what the Bible teaches. This unfortunate reality is intrinsically linked to the popularity increase of New Age spirituality. We've been so influenced by its integration into our society that we have become blind to recognizing and preventing the effects of this mainstream pop culture heritage even within the walls of God's house. We must take action against New Age spirituality. The first step towards prevention is knowledge. Now is the time to be informed. Well, that's what we're going to try to do this hour, is inform you about the dangers that are hidden within the New Age movement. Some of these dangers are subtle. Some of them are blatant. And we'll spend a a little bit of extra time on how they're affecting the church. Steve Bancars from Ontario, Canada, thank you for joining me for the hour. Yeah, thank you for having me. Steve, at the root of the New Age is man is divine. New spirituality, it's called new spirituality or alternative spirituality. The New Age God is a force or a field of consciousness. And uh, they use terms like Christ consciousness, which we'll get into a little bit later. And what attracted you to get into this? What attracted me, I I guess what really led me into the New Age movement was information that I had come across that uh, I didn't see the church really addressing. I didn't think the Bible could explain it. I didn't think Christians could explain it. And I was seeing this information that was really alternative, things like, you know, studies that demonstrate a relationship between consciousness and the material world, or things like evidence for, you know, UFO abduction reports, or maybe alien visitation in the ancient world. This stuff, when taken together, seemed to be enough evidence to overthrow, at the time, in my mind, to overthrow the biblical worldview I had been raised with. It was actually, speaking of about this being a mainstream pop culture heresy. It was actually a program on the History Channel that led me away from my Christian roots to being lost in the New Age. It was a program called Ancient Aliens. So what really attracted me to the New Age movement was the fact that it was giving answers to these fringe-type alternative topics that are really interesting that the Church just really wasn't addressing. I was raised a Christian, you know, homeschooled under a Christian curriculum, grew up in a Christian private school in the Church. I never heard anything like this addressed from the pulpit. And so the New Age teachers were quite happy to come in and offer their own explanation for these uh, alternative phenomenon. I'm just going to cite some issues here that I think will kind of define some of the practices in the New Age movement. And so, folks, listen up, because if you're doing any of these things or if you've got a loved one participating in just some of the things I'm going to name here, I could name a hundred things, just a few. Crystal therapy, Reiki, various forms of Eastern meditation, yoga. We've done entire programs on yoga, so-called Christian yoga. It's an oxymoron. We already covered that a month or two ago. Astral projection, anything related to Hinduism, guided meditation, visualization, spirit guides, crystal balls, enlightenment, ascended masters, chakras, Kabbalah, that's ancient Jewish occult, tarot cards, the zodiac, the kundalini serpent. Remember, I've done programming on how Hindu kundalini is entering the church. I mean, it's just shocking how it's not not subtly entering the church blatantly, and we'll get into that as we move into the program. Stephen, this movement, and I appreciated your attention to the history of the movement, really started 
by basically an occultist. Her name is Helena Blavatsky, a spiritualist from the 1800s, and she founded the Theosophical Society, and she stressed hidden knowledge. She had a publication called Lucifer, and you bring out a point in both your book and in, in the YouTubes I've watched that the New Age is rooted in the occult. I want you to expand on that just a moment, because I think a lot of people think the New Age is, well, it's probably tools to make us healthier, things like that that are pretty harmless. And you spend time talking to people about how it's really rooted in blatant satanic occult. Talk to me a little bit about that. Right. Well, uh, theistic Satanism, or what's called spiritual Satanism, where they actually revere Satan as being a literal entity worthy of worship and adoration, the practices in the New Age movement are identical to the practices practiced in spiritual Satanism, literally to a T. So as you mentioned, Helena Blavatsky, she's been dubbed the title Mother of the New Age because she has been really the one who popularized occult information and Eastern mysticism and such in the West. As you said, in the late 1800s, she did have a magazine that she started called Lucifer. But more shocking than that is the statement that she has made about Satan specifically. So here's the mother of the New Age movement, people, a person who, you know, professors of religion will say is responsible more than any other person for bringing New Age spirituality into the West. Here are some quotes from her on Satan. She says, it is but natural to view Satan, the serpent of Genesis, as the real creator and benefactor, the father of spiritual mankind. It is Satan who is the god of our planet and the only god. Satan, the enemy of God, is in reality the highest divine spirit. Now, that's one of about a hundred quotes from her work called The Secret Doctrine that praise Lucifer and Satan in some glorifying context, and that was extremely concerning to me when I came out of the New Age movement. I spent about 80 hours researching the origins of this movement, and I found this quote here. I want to read this to you. So some people will know a man by the name of Anton LaVey. He's the father of the Church of Satan. He's the author of the Satanic Bible. Listen to what he says about the New Age movement. He says, in the scores of books lining the shelves of New Age bookstores, there are instructions for guided meditation, creative vision visualizations, out-of-body experiences, getting in touch with your spirit guides, fortune-telling by cards, crystal balls, or the stars. What if Satanists reclaimed these for their own dark purposes mm -hmm. and integrated them into rituals dedicated to the devil where they rightfully belong? New Agers have freely drawn upon all manner of satanic material, adapting it to their own hypocritical purposes. New Age labeling is trying to play the devil's game without using his infernal name. So here's a lifetime occultist telling us that New Age is identical in its philosophy and practice to Satanism. And the reason for this, Jan, is that it really all boils down to the promise that man will become God through special knowledge. Right? So in the New Age movement, for example, people are told that God is the substance of the universe and therefore the substance of man, and that through some kind of self-realization, they can ascend to a state of divinity where they live from the state of unity with God. So really, the New Age movement is based off the same lie told in the Garden of Eden. This is a very ancient lie and ancient philosophy that through some knowledge that you don't have right now, you can become as a God or as the gods as it says in the King yes. James Version. So for at least 6,000 years, the same lie has tempted the egos of mankind, and unfortunately, the world is still buying into this satanic philosophy, where now, you know, it's not a snake in a garden anymore. Now it's best-selling New York Times best-selling authors like Eckhart Tolle, yes. or Neil Donald Walsh, or Deepak Chopra, teaching people almost verbatim the lie the enemy of God used to bring death into the world. You're listening to Understanding the Times Radio. I'm Jan Markell, and I have on the line Steve Bancars. He's co-author of a book I've read. We're not carrying it at this time. You can find it at Amazon.com. The Second Coming of the New Age, The Hidden Dangers of Alternative Spirituality in Contemporary America and Its Churches. I find it interesting because author Steve Bancars, as well as co-author Josh Peck, have spent a good deal of time both in the book and online saying, churches wake up. Don't you know some of this is creeping into the church? And we've done a whole program Programs on so-called Christian yoga. There's meditation. Some folks are walking the labyrinth, and we'll get into more of that as I get further into the program. And all of this, some blatantly coming into the church and some more subtly coming into the church. And Steve Bancars, you're not saying, and I heard you clarify this, that you're not saying that all participants, in other words, let's say somebody's participating
participating in crystal therapy. Okay, it is a dangerous thing, but they're not satanic. You're not calling these people necessarily satanic. No, I'm not calling these people satanic. If they were to do a little bit of research into the origins of their beliefs and of the type of spiritual movement that those beliefs originated out of and those practices originated out of, they would see that it's satanic or luciferian in its philosophy. But, you know, a lot of people, for example, they're unassuming. They walk into a bookstore that think, you know, something looks interesting or intriguing, a book about, you know, how to use crystals for self-healing. They pick it up and they want to try and, you know, manipulate energy now on their own bodies. That wouldn't be, you know, satanic of them. I mean, technically speaking, it would be sorcery. It would be witchcraft yeah. by definition because you're trying to manipulate metaphysical energy to your own advantage. But I don't think, you know, people in New Age are necessarily Satanists. I, I wasn't a Satanist, for example. I was right. a New Age teacher. Right. I taught this stuff online on one of the biggest New Age websites in the world. I was a, a guest author on the largest New Age website in the world. I hated Satan. I thought I was opposing Satan. I thought I was serving God. So I definitely don't think all New Agers are practicing Satanists right. or anything like that. I want to play a short clip here. It's only a minute and 20 seconds and get your response to it. And a, a very interesting a couple of statements are made in this little one minute and 20 seconds. And then I'm going to come back and get your take on it. You see, the New Age religious movement will be the religion of the Antichrist and the New World Order. Again, this is the simplest understanding to have on this subject. It is a religion that leads to worship of the Antichrist, who is the beast of revelation, the abomination of desolation. The New Age movement does not come in the form of traditional doctrine as, say, Christianity, Islam, or Judaism. There is no unified belief or practices. They typically do not label their churches as New Age. You will not find an official leader, such as the Pope for Catholics. They do not have an actual structure of an organization. It is not what we know today as organized religion. It does not work this way. It's more about the doctrine and beliefs, more than the label. In his book, The Kingdom of the Occult, Walter Martin says this about the New Age. In the turbulent decade of the 1970s, an explosion of occult knowledge occurred, saturating the Western world with the potent seeds of new perspective, a strange blend of 19th century spiritism, mysticism, and humanism. It took the name the New Age movement, it quickly evolved into a bolder, more organized revival of ancient occultism. It was a new title with an ancient goal, the penetration of all areas of culture, political, educational, and religious with man at the center of the universe. Steve, several things jumped out at me there. He said you will not find an official leader, and there's no real structure to the New Age movement. It's not an organized religion. Would you agree with those things? I would, yeah. There's no organization. There's no one you know, book that outlines all the doctrinal beliefs of the New Age movement. Um, we would definitely say, however, that there are stable core doctrines that are virtually universally held by those with the New Age movement. So things like the belief that man is intrinsically divine by nature. Things like nature has its own sort of divinity or deity to it. Things like uh, reincarnation, for example. These would be staple core New Age doctrines, but he's right to point out that there is no New Age Bible, as it were. Basically, anything is free game except the Jesus of the New Testament. Anything is embraced with open arms except the idea that Jesus is the only path to God. And um, that's where you really start to... That, that, to me, says a lot about the origins and nature of this movement, when Jesus Christ is the one that New Age teachers always have to try and explain away. They're always going out of their way to account for the person, the ministry of Jesus Christ, while everything else they accept with open arms. So that to me is very revealing. And I played, as we entered the program, I played a, a clip there of the kind of New Age priestess, Oprah Winfrey, and I found it interesting that you said, either in the book or in some online videos I watched of you, you said, you know, Oprah Winfrey is as dangerous as Helena Blavatsky. I mean, partly because she calls herself a Christian, Oprah Winfrey does, but she daily promotes this New Age spiritual but you would say that she's more dangerous or as dangerous as Helena Blavatsky, correct? I would say she's more dangerous because, for one, she has a bigger influence. She's one of the most influential women in history, arguably. And second of all, Helena Blavatsky didn't claim to be a Christian, right? So the reason, you know, that I would say she's caused more confusion to the Christian church and Christian culture in the West than anybody else in history is because she is promoting New Age doctrine, New Age heresy, while professing herself to be a Christian, right? So when the Father of Jesus Christ tells us, 
you shall have no other gods before me. And when Oprah claims to follow Jesus while also teaching, and I quote, we can create our spiritual understanding of our own, we can have a God of our own understanding. That's extremely confusing to the listeners because they are hearing one thing from Jesus and the opposite from Oprah and those who she features on her program. So it's way more dangerous. So if we look just in a nutshell, some of the things Oprah believes really quickly, she yeah. believes God is an energy and impersonal force in the universe that Jesus didn't come here to die for our sins but to show us how to live from a mystical state of mind called Christ consciousness, that Jesus isn't the only path to God, that man is defined by nature, that there is no text such as the Bible that defines once-for-all doctrine and theology, uh, reincarnation, the belief that we can kind of fashion a God for ourselves. And this is coming from someone, remember, who publicly professes Jesus year after year while claiming to be a Christian. And as you know, Jan, you can't be a Christian and hold any one of these beliefs, let alone all of them at the same time. And what she does is she will redefine God, redefine Christ, and redefine what it means to be a Christian. And now you have all the Christian language there, but you have pagan concepts and ideas derived from the Christian language. So if you were to compare what she teaches to some of the biggest New Age teachers in the world, such as Deepak Chopra or Eckhart Tolle, Marianne Williamson, Wayne Dyer, they're the exact same. And this is really dangerous because, first of all, it makes New Agers feel justified in their apostasy because Oprah's teaching allows them to feel like their sympathies and intuition toward Jesus are satisfied. It also gives backstood and professing Christians an excuse to depart from the faith by offering an alternative set of ideas and rules under the same name. And, and lastly, it makes those who are walking with the Lord think that these pagan ideas are compatible with Christianity and start to embrace them in their own lives. And all because you have one of the most influential women ever calling herself a Christian while promoting this stuff. And so I think she's far more dangerous than Helena Blavatsky, as you, you call it, the priestess of the New Age movement. You know, I would agree wholeheartedly. I think that she's done more for the New Age movement than anybody else in history, all while professing to be a Christian. It's extremely confusing and dangerous. If you'd like to learn more, you can find Steve Bancar's website at reasonsforjesus.com, reasonsforjesus.com. Again, the book, find it at Amazon, is The Second Coming of the New Age, The Hidden Dangers of Alternative Spirituality in Contemporary America and Its Churches. Here's where I want to go for the balance of the program. I want to get a little bit of Steve's personal testimony. We already heard how he got into it, but but I think some of the experiences that he had and how he got out of it. And then what I want to spend as much time as possible on in the remaining segments that we have is how is this affecting the church? Does your church, is it featuring something that uh, you might just not be aware of? And I've named some things. Is your church walk in the labyrinth, perhaps? Things like that. Featuring things like Christian yoga. We'll get into a whole lot more than that, but we can't get into anything in detail. It will at least give you kind of some warning signals in case your church is flirting with any of the things that would be represented, at least in Steve Bancar's book, The Second Coming of the New Age. I'm coming back in a couple of minutes. Don't go away. Just a quick reminder, every weekend, each new Understanding the Times radio broadcast is posted to our website at olivetreeviews.org. We would love to hear from you about this program. You can contact us through our website. The address again, olivetreeviews.org. One other reminder, this broadcast is listener supported. We appreciate your prayers for us. We appreciate your financial support. You can write to us at Olive Tree Ministries, Box 1452, Maple Grove, Minnesota, 55311. Please don't forget to save the date, September 21, at Grace Church in Eden Prairie, Minnesota. In weeks and months to come, we'll be sharing more details about our next fall conference. Once again, the book written by Jan's guest, Stephen Bancars, titled The Second Coming of New Age, the Hidden Dangers of Alternative Spirituality in Contemporary America and Its Churches can be ordered at Amazon.com. More from Stephen and Jan coming right up. This is Jan Markell, and we live in a day of lawlessness in the world and a day of carelessness in the church. This combination brings about a world of confusion where truth is being upstaged by social movements and the ideologies of liberal theology. We help you sort through these issues every weekend right here on this station. Thanks for supporting this radio outreach, now heading into its 19th year. There is a common misperception that radio stations actually pay hosts of programs like Understanding the Times Radio, when in fact, 
programs like this deal with serious weekly radio costs. If you would like to underwrite this program, give us a call Monday through Friday, Central Time, at 763-559-4444. That's 763-559-4444. Or just give conveniently online at olivetreeviews.org. That's olivetreeviews.org. You can always drop a tax-deductible check to Olive Tree Ministries, Box 1452, Maple Grove, Minnesota, 55311. That's Box 1452, Maple Grove, Minnesota, 55311. Proclaiming both the news and the good news this year. I am a Christian who believes that there are certainly many more paths to God other than Christianity. I'm a free-thinking Christian who believes in my way, but I don't believe that it's the only way. What I believe is that Jesus came to show us Christ's consciousness. Oprah advertises herself as a Christian while rejecting the essentials of the faith. It's that she deliberately rejects Christianity while promoting New Age spirituality. Oprah Winfrey is a professing Christian on one hand, and the most prominent New Age teacher on the planet. Planet, on the other hand. This is Understanding the Times Radio with Jan Markell. This hour, Jan's talking with Stephen Bancars about the New Age movement. Let's go back to their conversation. Once again, Jan Markell. I was a really broken person. I didn't realize how broken that I, I truly was, but I was depraved. I was miserable. I had depression and anxiety that I was suppressing. I had all of this quote unquote spiritual knowledge, all of this information, and it wasn't bearing any real fruit in my life. I felt like something was missing. I felt a little bit dead inside. Steve had a disturbing dream. When I opened my eyes, I was hovering four feet over my bed and realized that I was out of my body and I started having a panic attack and a being appeared in front of me and this being had red skin with black markings on his face. It just scared me because I realized that I wasn't in control, that this stuff is more powerful than I was, that these forces were real, and that they didn't care for my well-being. They didn't need my permission. I was in their playground. Shaken by the experience, he began investigating the claims of the Bible and Jesus more closely. I would sleep with the Bible under my pillow because I knew there was something there that was authoritative that was true and that was secure and that had power over anything that I was scared of. Well, thank the Lord, Steve Bancars finally realized he was dealing with very dark forces, that the dark forces are real. He realized he was actually playing around with blatant evil. Now again, he entered the New Age movement very young. He became extremely popular. His online following was staggering. I tell you, if I had that many online followers, we'd have quite a ministry here. I mean, it was just incredible the number of people who were looking to Steve for some kind of new age slash occult slash paranormal direction from him and, and his life. Steve, at 19, you really became a spiritual guru, as I said, to hundreds and hundreds of thousands. You felt God was, this really got to me, you felt God was rewarding you because you had a higher state of consciousness. And I played this clip and you were interviewed, I think it was on CBN, and fascinating short little interview there. But you felt all of this gave you a a greater sense of power, purpose, and meaning. And I bet do a lot of folks who are into this stream feel that they indeed have power, purpose, and meaning because of their paranormal influence? Yeah, well, when you're able to interact and presumably control, when you're being told that you can control not only the forces of nature, but spirit beings in another realm, where they're kind of at your disposal. You can call upon them when you want. You can tell them to depart from you when you want. It is very empowering, and it makes you feel as though you're the driver of your own ship. And as I mentioned in that interview there, that soundbite from the 700 Club from CBN, what was really shocking to me is that all of the rules I had learned in the New Age movement about how spirit beings are allowed to interact with mankind, they proved to be false in one single experience where I was pulled out of my body against my will by what I can only describe as being a demon, red skin, black markings on his face. I was in what's called a lucid dream where you're consciously aware that
that you're within a dream and I got pulled out of my car within this dream and I got sucked into his third eye. It sounds crazy, but he had a, a third eye in between his two regular eyes, which is a symbol of psychic empowerment in the New Age movement. It's related to the pineal gland. And when it opened that and I got sucked into his third eye, I opened my eyes after about three seconds of blackness and I was hovering four feet in the air over my bed. And I spent the next four or five minutes trying to fight to get back into my body. And I see my physical leg. I see that I'm not in my physical leg. I'm trying to get back into it. And that to me was extremely terrifying because I really, I realized I don't have sovereignty over myself and over these practices and the New Age movement. And the real reason is because when you start doing anything Scripture tells you not to do, when you start engaging in different types of supernatural sin, immediately you step outside of the protective covering of the Father. And that's exactly what happened to me. You obviously, you got your eyes open here and you repented. You turned to God and turned your life around because of what happened to you. You made a public statement to your hundreds of thousands of followers. What was the response? Right. In a nutshell, I had a Facebook page, right, called Spirit Science and Metaphysics, which gathered over half a million followers in less than a year and a half. And what I did is I had this network with some of the largest New Age or conscious Facebook pages on the internet, and we would all share each other's stuff. So by the time I had my own website up and running in 2014 as kind of a call culmination of my research, I started sharing it to all these pages I had access to, and that's how I started developing a real solid following. And my website, it was really popular. It took off. It was getting hundreds of thousands of views a day. I actually made $60,000 in my first month in ad revenue. And so here I am, you know, eventually bought my own house. I'm 22 years old, making 40, 50 grand a month, living in a 4,000 square foot house, as you featured in the clip there, broken and depraved and wicked. These are all understatements. I was darkened. I was black. And the Bible says that you were darkness. I was darkness. I was spiritually dead. I was morally and spiritually bankrupt. And after I started confessing sins to people in my life and realizing, you know, I am not fit to be God over my own life anymore, that's why I decided to say a prayer of salvation with my mother to invite Jesus into my life. And a few weeks went by. Nothing really changed after that prayer, but it was kind of an invitation, Jesus, I want more of you. I want who you really are. I don't want the New Age version of you anymore. And it culminated to me having this moment of brokenness in his presence where I was weeping before him in repentance, asking for forgiveness, asking that he would hear me. And the only way I can describe it is I got engulfed with his presence, where the atmosphere started to change, and it became thick with his glory. And I knew it was a personal, I knew it was the Jesus of the New Testament. It was a personal, divine, authoritative presence all around me. And I, I knew it was, you know, the Jesus I had been raised with. And I knew he loved me. I knew he was a Lord. I knew everything was subject to him. And all I could say in my head during this time was, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord over in my head. And I got born again. I got born again in a five-minute encounter with him. I got filled with the Holy Spirit, and I couldn't believe what I had just experienced. It was Jesus Christ. And even when I was in his presence, Jan, something that was really interesting was it seemed like nature itself was responding to him in that moment. Like his presence showed up, and I could detect in the Spirit that nature was responding to him being there. That really, really moved me, because I was, I was seeing how even the universe is subject to him. Even the created world knows that Jesus is Lord. And so I got born again. I went inside. I had the Holy Spirit reveal all of these lies and deceptions to me about the New Age movement, and as you said, I made a public apology to people. I told them the New Age movement's a deception to keep people away from salvation in Christ. I apologized to them for leading them into demonic deception uh, and practices that are only going to invite demons into their body. And as far as the reception goes, the reception ranged from people telling me to kill myself and rid myself off the face of the earth to people kind of keeping watch and, and taking tabs to see if I was genuine and sincere, to, praise God, a lot of people came out of the New Age movement. In fact, the best-selling New Age author of all time, her name's Doreen Virtue. You can go to any bookstore in any place in America, and you're going to see her angel cards that are still up there because she's still they're still under contract. But she's a repentant Christian now. She said my videos helped give her courage and boldness to leave the New Age movement and publicly come forward mm -hmm. with her faith. So the response ranged from people telling me to kill myself and absolutely freaking out to some of the most prominent New Age teachers ever being inspired to lead the New Age movement mm -hmm. as well. So praise God for that. Yes, indeed. Again, you can learn more at reasonsforjesus.com, reasonsforjesus.com. You can find the book. The most convenient place, folks, is Amazon, and that's The Second Coming of the New Age, The Hidden Dangers of Alternative Spirituality in Contemporary America and Its Churches, and it's by Steve Bancars and John. Josh Peck. So I've read a good portion of it, plus I've seen videos 
videos online that are very moving. And indeed, the troubling part, of course, is lots of things, but the number of people caught up in this, perhaps a number of people naively caught up in it. Again, they may be doing certain practices that sound perfectly harmless, and I talked about some of those in the first segment. Crystal therapy, Reiki, certain kinds of meditation, yoga, astral projection, guided meditation, visualization, spirit guides, crystal balls, enlightenment, ascended masters, chakras, Kabbalah, tarot cards, the zodiac, kundalini, kundalini spirit. I could go on and on. And some of you listening are participating in some of these things and you think it's harmless. It's maybe even be healthy. And we're here to tell you that it's spiritually reckless and dangerous. You're listening to Understanding the Times Radio. I'm Jan Markell. I have on the line from Canada, uh, co-author Stephen Bancars. Stephen, a couple of things here. How can Christians accept this? I mean, the New Age Christianizes its message. You bring that out. The church ignores the message. You bring that out. Bible verses are taken out of context by New Age teachers. They might use John 10. They would extrapolate Jesus saying, you are gods. Pastors don't want to offend, so they won't confront people who are going into these things. I'm just pulling out some points that you bring out, both in your book and online. You bring out the fact Jesus is someone who became Christ by raising his consciousness through meditation, yoga, contemplation. He realized he was God. Anyway, these are just some of the tricks that the New Age is playing on people who may even have a church background. Exactly, and, and I do want to take a moment here just to dispel this myth and this idea that kind of floats around in our culture that New Age is some fringe type issue, that it's not really a problem in our culture, that it's just kind of a, maybe a handful of hippies in Sedona, Arizona. Mm-hmm. But in fact, when you look at statistics, when you have you know, 36 million Americans currently practicing yoga as a, a $10 billion industry, right. when you have 40% of Americans say they meditate at least once a week, when you have 27% of Americans identify as being spiritual but not religious, and this number continues to grow year after year after year. Uh, actually, October 1st, 2018, after our book, The Second Coming of the New Age, was published, a study came out that showed that 62% of the American population hold at least one New Age belief, and they only tested for four beliefs. They tested for the belief of spiritual energy being present within nature, in psychics having reliable insight into the future, in astrology, and in reincarnation. They only tested four beliefs at 62% of Americans. But what's scary, Jan, is that 61% of professing Christians also held at least one of these New Age beliefs. That's right, 61%, you're right. And they weren't testing for things like pantheism, the idea that God is in nature. They weren't testing for the idea that all paths lead back to God in the end, eventually, universalism. They weren't testing for belief in the Eastern principle of karma or yoga. So I would say a very conservative estimate is that 80% of professing Christians hold at least one New Age belief, which, in my opinion, is nothing short of a theological crisis in the Church right now. It's very unfortunate that about one third of people who claim to be Christian believe in reincarnation, for example. And what I really want pastors and Christians to realize, those who are concerned, is that atheism, atheism isn't the problem in our culture anymore. Only 3% of the American population identify as atheists. The problem isn't that people stop believing in God, it's that they start to believe they are God. Mm -hmm. They are more likely to believe they are divine than to reject the divine altogether. And so the New Age movement, as we talked about earlier on the program, this is being taught by Ellen DeGeneres, okay, Oprah Winfrey, Russell Brand, Jim Carrey. This is the religion, the spiritual movement that's taking over the West right now. And as you've mentioned, Jan, it is starting to infiltrate its way into modern evangelical churches as well. Absolutely. And something else you bring out, Stephen, is is that some churches will now stress that Jesus being the only way is very narrow. So maybe some of these things we're talking about, maybe they're okay. Well, the truth is narrow, right? It is. He says in John 18, he says, I came to bear witness to the truth, and whoever is on the side of truth is on my side, right? Jesus says, don't think I've come to bring peace upon the earth. I haven't come to bring bring peace. I've come to bring division. division. And the truth divides, right? It divides light from darkness, holy from the profane, truth from untruth. And so, yes, the truth is extremely narrow. Narrow is the way that leads to eternal life, and few there be that find it. But the truth is a person, and the truth is Jesus. And I, my hope would be that people would be open-minded enough to, if they read the book or the second coming of the New Age, to be open-minded and willing to follow the evidence where it leads. 
if it leads somewhere narrow, then we're going to stick with the narrow because at least it's true. And so in the New Age movement, of course, they completely pervert the idea of truth. Truth is all relative to the individual. You can create your own truth. It's all this postmodern, self-defeating philosophy that has no basis in science, in scripture, really in history until about 60 years ago. And Jesus Christ completely overthrows that by saying, no man comes to the Father except through me. Does the New Age teach that Jesus is someone who became Christ by raising his consciousness through meditation? yoga, contemplation, etc. I mean, he realized he was God through practicing these things, which so many Christians are doing. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. This doctrine is called Christ consciousness. And and just to, once again, demonstrate the pervasiveness of this idea, this is something taught by Oprah Winfrey, by Deepak Chopra, Mm -hmm. Eckhart Tolle. So what they do is they define God as being the substance of reality and say, you know, well, we're all made of God. And therefore, we are kind of God in human form. God is the substance of our being. He's the substance of humanity. And so Jesus is someone who came to show us how to self-realize that we are intrinsically divine. Jesus is someone who became Christ by realizing he was intrinsically connected to God, just as everyone else is, just as everything is in creation. And so he came to teach us how to be enlightened and enter into the kingdom of God which is used as a metaphor for this divine state of consciousness of realizing you are inseparable from the being and substance of God, right? So Christ consciousness is the idea that Jesus came to teach us that man is inherently unified with God and is separated from God only through self-ignorance, not through sin, but through self-ignorance. And Oprah Winfrey says that she believes Jesus didn't come here to die for our sins, but to teach us and show us the Christ consciousness that abides with each of us. So, you know, Neil Donald Walsh, for example, in the book Conversations with God, which is a series that has sold over 10 million copies, mind you, in there, you know, not just Jesus has been Christed, you can be Christed too. You know, you can become a Christ. And it's, it's dangerous because Jesus says, what does Jesus say? In the last days, many people will come saying, I am Christ, and will deceive many. He says, don't go after those who say, I am Christ. But here you have New Age teachers telling millions and millions and millions of people, convincing them, you are Christ. It's literally fulfilling biblical prophecy mm-hmm. for the end times, this stuff. Here's where I want to go, Stephen, in my closing segment, and we'll get in as much of this as we can. And folks, what we can't get in, you can find a lot online on YouTube, and you can certainly find it in Stephen's book, The Second Coming of the New Age. But just what are some of the practices that the Church is putting its blessing on? And we've made some reference to them. We'll take a closer look here in my closing segment. For instance, you may remember a year ago, I talked about uh, Christ alignment. Basically, these are Christianized tarot cards, destiny cards, destiny readings. We'll spend a minute or two on that. Angel boards. I never thought I'd see the day when we'd have uh, Christianized Ouija boards, but they're called angel boards or spirit boards. We've got, again, yoga in the church, uh, kundalini in the church. We've got, I mentioned it, walking the labyrinth. We've got some contemplative prayer. We've got Stephen Fields' near-death experience would be New Age-type experiences that perhaps they're dreams, hallucinations, or visions. And he brought out something interesting that I was particularly caught my attention, that we're reading some popular books today where it's really Jesus speaking word for word in these books, which is nothing more than sort of glorified channeling, uh, trying to get to to believe that Jesus is speaking word for word, word by word, in some books today that are bestsellers, and this would be closer to New Age belief than Christianity. So those are some things and more we'll get to as we have time in my closing segment. The book, again, is The Second Coming of the New Age. You can find it at Amazon.com, and I'm coming back in just a couple of minutes. We'll wrap this up with Stephen Bancars. Learn more at ReasonsForJesus.com. Come back in just a minute or two. Don't go away. We know you're enjoying Jen's discussion with Stephen Van Cars on the New Age Movement. We want to remind you this broadcast comes into your home every week because people like you have supported it. Without your participation in praying for us and giving, we could not be heard coast to coast in over 830 radio stations. So thanks to all of you for your generous support. We welcome your tax-deductible gifts mailed to Olive Tree Ministries, Box 1452, Maple Grove, Minnesota, 55311. Or you can give securely online at olivetreeviews.org. If you need to reach us by phone, 763-559-4444 is the number to call. Jan and Stephen return right after this brief timeout.
I have watched the tide of our times deteriorate for decades. Some say we are in the time period known as the beginning of sorrows, but that actually comes later in God's clock and calendar. Still without an eternal perspective, people are discouraged today, and that is why Hebrews 10 tells us to encourage one another. Olive Tree Ministries has products that will help you do that. Visit our website, olivetreeviews.org, olivetreeviews.org. We have books and DVDs that are uplifting and that will remind you that the King is coming soon and the darkness will turn to dawn. If you want to stay up to date, also check our daily headlines posted hourly every day. The sons of Issachar in 1 Chronicles 12 were men who understood the times. God wants us to be in the know, up to date, and looking at events that cause us to await His return. In today's world, who do you trust for good insight on current events? For that matter, who do you trust for good Bible commentary? America is full of fake news and false teaching. That's why we want to offer you an alternative to both. We are Understanding the Times Radio with Jan Markell, and our main objective is to tell you the truth about current events as they relate to a biblical worldview. Join us each week on this station for a source you can trust. New Age religion comes wrapped up in a package of self-help, self-esteem, and self-reliance. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Messiah, which strengthens me. The New Age philosophy subtly removes Messiah from our thoughts and makes us believe that we can do all things if we just believe it and will it to be so. It's the power of positive thinking. Now for the conclusion of today's Understanding the Times broadcast, once again, Jan Markell. The New Age movement consists of a massive network of groups that all work towards one desired goal. The main goal of the New Age religious movement is bringing about reign and worship of a one world leader who will control a world government. He will bring enlightenment to the masses. He will bring peace to the earth and show people how to live in peace through him. They refer to him as the Christ or Maitreya. They will accomplish this goal in many ways, but one main specific way is to bring about acceptance of all religions and beliefs but at the same time, directly blaspheme the doctrine of Judeo-Christian beliefs. This blaspheme sometimes is very direct, but a lot of it is very subtle. So subtle, that if one does not put on the full armor of Elohim, they may be swayed by this philosophy. You see, in New Age philosophy, you can believe in Jesus Christ, just as long as you don't read your Bible too much and really practice what it says. Okay, we are wrapping up my hour-long conversation with author Steve Bancars. Just a couple of quick announcements here. And uh, you know, we have a very active Facebook page, Jan Markell's Olive Tree Ministries. You might want to join the conversation there. Follow us on Twitter at Olive Tree Men. And just consider getting my print and e-newsletter. We talk about these issues in the print and e-newsletter, olivetreeviews.org, olivetreeviews.org. And remember, the program is posted to my website every Saturday morning, olivetreeviews.org. Or you might sign up for the oneplace.com mobile app, and then it's downloaded to your device every Saturday morning. So please, won't you follow us? If you are too busy to follow us on Real Radio, which we are on about 830 stations, you can always get us online, my website, oneplace.com, and other locations as well. Steve, I kind of gave a little tease going out of my last segment, and let's just talk about some things happening in the church, sneaking in the back door, in some cases, rushing in the front door. Full-blown occult practices, in some cases, in other cases, perhaps more New Agey type things, but as we've kind of discussed over the hour, the New Age really is the occult, and it's trying to Christianize questionable things things at best. In way last February, I believe, I talked about Christ alignment, Christianized tarot cards called destiny card readings. This is a Christ alignment people in Australia talking about Christianized tarot cards. Hi guys, my name's Ali and I'm one of the healers down at the Christ alignment healing um, tent, you can say, <laughs> at the Dandenong markets. And um, you can come down and see us. We're here on Tuesdays, Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays from 9 a.m. till 4 p.m. 
and um, we're at stand which is called J11 so just come and find us and um, we'd love to see you for a spiritual healing uh, a destiny card reading where you can um, ask a question and receive an answer from spirit um, we work with the the highest spirit the Christ spirit and um, yeah we give accurate destiny card readings words of knowledge guidance clarity um, letting go of emotional things and, and getting um, renewed basically um, you can also have dream interpretation so if you have a dream you'd like interpreted feel free to email it we'd love to see you down here so. C-band cards uh, Christianized tarot cards now these folks would say that they're using these Christianized tarot cards for evangelistic purposes your thoughts on this interestingly it's not just about ministry there and I would say that you know, I do believe these people are well-intentioned. Yeah. I think maybe even some of them are, are born-again Christians who feel, hey, you know, we're operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We're operating in word of knowledge here. There is actually a plethora uh, of ministries that are that are utilizing cards, so it's just not mm -hmm. a bad ministry. It, it's kind of becoming a trend right now. And as far as using cards and kind of appealing to the intuition of people who are unsaved and, you know, asking them, you know, pick a card that you feel drawn to. Okay, now pick another card. Now pick another card. Now we're going to pray into this and ask Spirit what he's saying about the card you picked. And as far as that is an evangelical method, I mean, I don't think that from Scripture that word of knowledge operates like that. You don't just choose to operate in word of knowledge. The Holy Spirit appoints the gifts as he wills and bases an entire evangelical ministry off of this idea that you can be like a newborn Christian and just choose to operate in the, the third heaven or choose to operate in word of knowledge. I don't really see that as being biblical. I would say it's a stumbling block as well to Christians and to those outside the body of Christ. That is actually a very, very small way in terms of the amount of people numerically who are being impacted by new age in the church. I, I think that a much bigger practice, once again, maybe well-intentioned people, um, as you mentioned, I'll mention briefly here, Christian yoga, where you actually have Christian yoga ministries. You have you can get your own Christian yoga certificate, and this is paganism by definition. Yoga literally means union and refers to a state of union where your individual self is unified with Brahman, with the universal spirit that undergirds reality. So it's not just stretching. Yoga is designed to shift your consciousness and align your energy systems in your body so that you facilitate a higher consciousness called moksha, where you realize that God is all and all is God. It's literally Hinduism in practice. And as uh, we mentioned earlier on the program, this is a $10 billion industry. And this is being practiced in the church, being practiced outside of the church by Christians. Some of these poses, they're meant to honor and revere the polytheistic gods of Hinduism. They're meant to invoke them, to invoke their essences, their properties into one's life. You're literally exercising your body, your members of your body onto idolatry. You're opening up a spiritual portal for demonic oppression. My own mother, for example, had to quit her job recently because of New Age in her church. She had worked at a church for several years, and to honor the church's anniversary of having been built on indigenous land, they invited indigenous tribes in to come celebrate, and they were doing drum circles, pagan drum circles, which are meant to invoke spirits in the room, and they were doing smudging ceremonies in the church, and the church was inviting its members, come celebrate this with us. So there's many, many different ways that the New Age movement is beginning to infiltrate the church. We go over that in our book, but it's really getting out of control, Jan. Yeah. I'm sure that yeah. you're aware of that. It is really getting out of control. Absolutely. It's getting out of control. A contemplative prayer. I mean, I think people think, well, doesn't everybody sort of contemplate when they pray? Well, that's not quite what we mean. Why don't you give me one minute on contemplative prayer? Contemplative prayer is meant to facilitate a shift in consciousness. I'm quoting from a guy named Pennington here who started a Catholic mystic who started the contemplative prayer movement where we go from ordinary consciousness to a state of pure consciousness in which we leave the false self for the true self and attain a unity consciousness with God, right? So he actually says this, that God is known in pure consciousness rather than by some subject, object, knowledge. And what they mean is that when you shift your awareness away from the ego consciousness, away from the mental chatter, away from thinking, and into a state of just pure awareness, that that's where you meet God with. That's where you interact with God. And so contemplative prayer is a set of practices where you're going to kind of pick a mantra, repeat a mantra over and over in, in your head mm -hmm. for the purpose of trying to shift your psychology so that when you shift your brainwave state and you shift your state of mind, now you're able to somehow, I don't know, interact with God better. I mean, that's not how you interact with God. You interact with God through supplication, through repentance, through righteousness, through praying in the Spirit, not through trying to 
you know, shift your own consciousness, some pagan means. It's really mindfulness. It's literally mindfulness by definition. There's no vertical connection made between you and God. You're just using scripture or some kind of mantra, a Christianized mantra, repeating it to yourself to try and facilitate some new state of consciousness to accomplish some pagan end of meeting God in, in a place of pure consciousness or something. It's just, it's really, really deceptive. Unfortunately, it is being promoted and encouraged by some really prominent evangelical leaders as well. Angel boards or spirit boards. I I thought I was in tune, Stephen. I thought I was really aware of the kind of the evil things coming along. I did not know there were angel boards, also called spirit boards. They're dressed up Ouija boards and never thought I'd see the day. When did this come along? I'm not really sure when it came along. It's been around for, for quite a while. It seems like a very old product, but this is something where, you know, it, it does appeal to a younger generation who maybe wants to dabble in the supernatural in a way that they feel is safe. And obviously, for some reason, kids have some kind of fascination with Ouija boards. But now here we have more of a Christianized, appropriate, safe way to engage with supernatural entities and supernatural beings, which, I mean, is, is simply idolatry. There's no instance in all of Scripture where anyone has ever tried to contact an angel. Out of 31,000 verses in, in, in the Bible, nowhere does it say to contact an angel. There's no precedent for that. And, you I know, mean, the Bible says in Second Corinthians 11 that Satan masquerades himself as an angel of light. You know, you're trying to contact angels. How do you know what you're contacting is actually an angel when you're practicing spiritism by definition? These are practices God put the death penalty on in the Old Testament, and now we're embracing them in the church wholeheartedly. You mentioned as well, you know, there's some best-selling books that are, are yep. new age in their orientation that are in Christian bookstores. And you mentioned near-death experiences. I wouldn't say near-death experiences are all new age necessarily, but there is one, a book called Proof of Heaven, where you have a former Harvard-trained neurosurgeon who had this encounter where he went to heaven, apparently, and it's in Christian bookstores everywhere. It sold 14, 15 million copies. But he is actually linked up now with the Theosophical Society of Hel- yeah. Helena Blavatsky that we talked about earlier on in the program. Okay. And, you know, I actually went to a Christian bookstore recently, and I pulled it off the shelf, and I was like, do you guys realize this is New Age? Let me explain. And she was like, you can throw that in the garbage. I don't want that sold in this store. And, you know, this is a, a very popular, prominent book. There's another one where... As you mentioned earlier, it's basically channeling, right? So, and I quote, this author would sit down, quote, to listen to God with pen in hand, writing down whatever I believe he was saying, and that it changed from monologue to dialogue, and that she began to write messages that began to flow more freely in dialogue with Jesus. But when you're reading the words, it's Jesus speaking in the first person. Like, the Apostle Paul didn't even do that. He would say, I, Paul, write these things to you. He wasn't saying, I, Jesus, or I, Holy Spirit, write these things to you. If you read the actual content of this book as well, he doesn't sound like Jesus. He's using words like divine mind or spirit mind mm-hmm. or divine alchemy. I mean, if Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, if it doesn't sound like Jesus, it's not Jesus. Amen. I mean, no Christian who has the Holy Spirit reads these words, and the Spirit bears witness. Yes, these are the verbatim word-for-word messages from the Lord Jesus yep. Christ, and this is also, you know, tens of millions of copies. Being tens of millions book. of copies. The author, I'm sure, is a multi multi-millionaire because of, of these practices. Folks, you, all this info found in the second coming of the New Age, the hidden danger of alternative spirituality in contemporary America and its churches, with a good emphasis in the book about the church. Honestly, that's what was most helpful to me, but I think anybody you love dabbling in it, you need to get them the book or find Stephen Bancar's online on YouTube. Outstanding teachings he's got there. Let me close. I'm completely out of time because the Bible says that in the last days, people would give heed to the doctrine of demons, and you have heard about all of that in this hour. And while this is a part of the perilous time scenario written about in 2 Timothy 3, it is not too late for you to pull out of this movement if you find yourself attracted to it or even active in it. So renounce the evil, turn to God, turn your life around, become a new creature today, a new creature in Christ tomorrow. 